next I invite Aditya to talk on coral detachments. Aditya has also made a name for himself in uh, SA files, especially propagating the modified Yamanes technique. Uh, and uh, so over to Aditya. Thank you, Dr. Jayantu, for inviting me for this course. So I'll be talking about choroidal detachments and the drainage techniques. So basically, it's a potential space, suprachoroidal space between choroid and sclera. And abnormal accumulation of the fluid in the suprachoroidal space is choroidal detachment. It can be hemorrhagic or it can be serous. The common risk factors are hypotony, trauma, use of blood thinners, inflammatory conditions, and history of detachment in the other eye. So hypotony leads to the seepage of fluid from the choroidal capillaries that seeps into the suprachoroidal space, and that causes choroidal detachment. So we have serous eye and hemorrhagic choroidal detachment. In serous choroidal detachment, you have transudation of serum into the suprachoroidal space due to hypotony. And this is due to the small cap peripheral effusions, which are uh, usually asymptomatic, but the larger ones require treatment. So the best treatment for these conditions is oral steroids. And these wide field fundus cameras are now extremely useful for monitoring the progress of these patients. So this is a one patient where a similar thing was done. Post trabeculectomy patient developed hypotony, and oral steroids have done their job. Another patient with another extensive choroidal effusion was treated with similar oral steroid treatment and did well. And even almost 360 degrees choroidal effusion also works quite well with oral steroids. So don't shy away. Even if you see kissing choroidals to have more tolerance to the fluid, allow the oral steroids to take effect. And don't jump into draining this serous choroidal effusion because you drain another hypotony means another chance of effusion. Now coming to the hemorrhagic choroidal detachment, the blood accumulates due to the rupture of choroidal vessels, abrupt onset of severe pain, marked reduction in visual acuity, and it is often associated with high intraocular pressure. And the prognosis and outcomes are usually not very favorable. Intraoperative choroidal detachment, you can see in a patient now, I'll show you a 40-year-old male, status post road traffic accident, came with one meter vision. On examination, there was anteriorly displaced IOL, and the surgery was planned for IOL explant and secondary IOL. The infusion cannulas are in place, and now I am enlarging the limbal incision to explant this lens. And you can see the mound of choroid starting to build up because of the open wound. There is hypotony, and the cannula has slipped back. So all that you need to do here is stop, take the cannula out, suture the wound, and start the infusion from the other side. so lucky and we have a patient who is one-eyed who came with intraoperative suprachoroidal hemorrhage and this patient was subsequently treated with sorry. so uh, this patient had to be operated secondly second as a second surgery for drainage of the suprachoroidal hemorrhage so a one-eyed patient on anticoagulants a high-risk patient on anticoagulants as well as antihypertensives he also had some cardiac issues and fitness related issues you can see the cornea is already edematous because the pressure is very high and since the exact duration of the surgery the first surgery and the second surgery could not be planned we went ahead with a conventional way of draining the suprachoroidal hemorrhage because we were anticipating some clots to be drained here so radial incision is made onto the sclera about 7 to 8 millimeters away uh, based on the b scan findings with maximum Now the reason for 
for doing vitrectomy here is there is vitreous hemorrhage also on top of uh, the supracoronal hemorrhage. So I am clearing up the vitreous hemorrhage. And also at the same time I can see that the amount of coronal effusion is reduced. But it's not gone completely. So I make another opening just next to the previous one. it with the iris repositor allowed some more blood to come out Indications of surgery are flat intraocular chamber, marked reduction in the visual acuity, long-standing choroidal detachment, appositional choroids, and suprachoroidal hemorrhage. These are the indications of uh, drainage of suprachoroidal hemorrhage. So it comes from various etiologies. Most commonly encountered is glaucoma surgery, especially hypotony inflammation or both. While choroidal effusions can resolve spontaneously, surgical drainage may be necessary in some cases, as I showed. And it can result in good visual acuity if timely treatment is carried out. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aditya. Uh, any, uh, any comments? Uh, at the end of Shubhendu, spondylitis is for a detachment. Right. Okay. 